Hello and welcome, listeners, to another episode of West Side Stories. I'm your host, your master of ceremonies, DJ Bernstein. Not really, I'm not DJ. DJ Bernstein? DJ. DJ Bernstein? That's my, that's my stage name. <laughs> waka waka wow! I wish I had one. <laughs> um, today I am joined by Hannah Prindable and Alan Estrada. Hello. They will be my co-hosts for today. And we'll be uh, discussing two things going on with, I guess, like, I guess you could say performing arts. And uh, first up is the spring musical Cabaret, which Alan has a part in. So, Alan, would you like to tell us about that? Sure. All right. So, basically, Cabaret, a Cabaret is basically like a bar, and that's where the whole, more or less, that's where it takes place in, a bar. Now, the story progresses with Clifford, who is an American, and he's the main character. And Clifford meets Sally Bowles and a bunch of other characters. And the story progresses in, um, somebody's calling it. And the story progresses in, at first, it seems really light and basically like a really uplifting story, like just you're there to have a good time. Uh -huh. But as the play progresses, that like a lot of serious stuff, start, stuff mm -hmm. starts happening. So. This is set in Nazi Germany, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's right before oh. World War Two. So, so when the play starts, mm -hmm. it's like, I guess maybe like when Hitler is rising to power, mm -hmm. and then yeah. as it progresses, it's like yeah. things are escalating more uh -huh. and more. And you said, is it ever like directly referenced? Like yes, it it eventually does get directly referenced. But it starts. You get like little pieces of bits about what's happening in Germany mm -hmm. at that time, but. At one point, you do find out how the war and the Nazi Germany and how Germany is Nazi and how mm -hmm. the power of Nazism is coming to power, it starts affecting the character. The, <laughs> yeah, the power of Nazism. <laughs> Nazism <laughs> starts affecting the characters in multiple ways. So it's a very intriguing story about that. So you won't see anybody going doing like the Heil Hitler thing or anything, but there is. That's. It's a surprise. We don't know yet. Oh, we don't know yet. We, you can't reveal <laughs> that to us. Yet. It so could what, happen. Huh? What part do you play? I am actually Ernst Ludwig. He is a German, Ernst Ludwig. and he is one of he is the first person that Clifford meets. Okay. So I'm I'm a close friend of Clifford, and like this is high a high school musical. I mean. I guess that yes, but last year we also did do Chicago, which yeah, is a extremely right. But that so, was like uh -huh. crime and drugs, mm -hmm. whereas this is like this is like pushing genocide. social boundaries, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So it's like on I, the borderline of making Holocaust mm -hmm. jokes. Yeah, oh, God. And, <laughs> uh, it's on the verge of something like that. But I guess it's if we do it right, which the directors are trying their mm -hmm. best to keep us still in line. Because there's a lot of references that we're taking out of the place simply because of how bad they were. Right. So the directors are trying to keep it in line with school code, mm -hmm. but while it's still being a bit edgy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's slightly above a play full mm -hmm. of dead baby yeah. jokes. A, a, a bit <laughs> above. Of a bit above. It's, yeah, just a bit. Well, okay, well, I mean, as long as there is that line there, mm -hmm. I guess. As long as you're yeah. not offending people. I am it's, half Jewish, and I must say, I am very offended, not really. I, I mean... <laughs> but I mean, it's... Can it get offensive? Yes. And I think that that's, like, an important part of the story, is that it shows how the characters react and how you're supposed to be reacting. And, yeah, basically the... So it kind of toys with your emotions. Mm -hmm. It definitely does toy with your emotions. But... I don't think that it's technically going across any boundaries because I think that these are things that need to, like, are being addressed and have been addressed. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing to be addressed by high school students and the way that we portray it. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So trying to tell the story in a way that people will learn it and mm -hmm. it's interesting so they'll yes. have to pay yes. attention to so, it. So, and yeah, and we definitely do, whenever we think about Germany and the Nazis at that time, we don't really get... Oh, look into the average German. Percent. Oh, you mean like the civilians? Yeah, like, like we basically know about civilians. like you know the army. And yeah, and, and usually during the whole time, we find that Germans aren't really portrayed that well. But we also find out how the war and how Nazis do affect the average German in the play. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. 
So that's performing on April 30th, May 1st, and May 2nd, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that starts at 7. And tickets are cheap. Very cheap. And the house opens at 6.30. And it's usually best to come in earlier to get good seats. True, true. Um, And we also put a lot of work into the set. The set is magnificent. Yes. I've been to a few of the work days, and I can say, like, just, like, the whole lighting of it and the way Mm -hmm. that the set is painted. The paint is amazing. It's all, like, red and black, sort of, like, it's kind of like wood, but then, if wood, if wood, if the brown in wood was replaced with red <laughs> and black, and black, that's oh, what you'd have. It's a really gorgeous set. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really you have, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and that's also like two stages, like mm-hmm. it's two stories. So we put a lot of work in. And we're it. using a lot of red lighting, which is mm-hmm. something we usually don't do. Usually mm-hmm. it's just regular white lights, but yeah. uh, we took and put some little red transparent thingies in front of the lights. <laughs> And so now it's all red, and it looks really eerie and creepy. And I guess in some ways it makes it seem really dirty. You know, that's the way it seems no. really scary. And I guess for the show, it's the perfect atmosphere. Yeah, it's, 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 it, the play is raunchy at times. The ride can be raunchy, and it can also be... And it also does portray the, like, violence that does eventually occur into the play. Gotcha. Well, um, I guess that's everything uh, we about need to cabaret. tell about Cabaret right now. On a more light-hearted note... The Shakespeare Fest is coming up soon. So, uh, I was hoping to get Grace and Prophet in here to talk about, uh, because he's doing something. He's working a booth for Shakespeare Fest for uh, Mr. Garland. Mm -hmm. Like, all the English teachers have their own little booths, and they all have students who run it. But, um, no, so I'm going to have to talk about most of this. But luckily, I wrote a story about this in the High News last year, and I still remember most of the information. (laughs) So I remember from what I gathered, um, the Shakespeare Fest is actually relatively new. Like, it's, I don't know if it's even 10 years old. No, we haven't done it that many times. Yeah, maybe it's but... slightly older. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shakespeare Fest is a relatively new thing. I mean, it was started by Miss B. Long, I want to say, nine years ago? I don't Somewhere know the right, exact yeah, number for like that. that. But yeah, it, was, it, was, it, was, it wasn't a super long time ago. And the idea was it was to celebrate uh, Shakespeare and everything he did for literature, as well as like just the time period in general, like the Renaissance and yeah. Victorian era and all that. So that's why we see like not only just Shakespeare in the little Shakespeare Fest, but also like there's weapons, there's the insult booth. Yeah. I remember yeah, working there's a mustache year, booth. Good. The mustache booth, not, uh, like Renaissance era mustache. Yeah, it was, it was fun time. There's the wedding. Mm-hmm. There's oh, there's like there's oh, a new one this year, I think. There is. Uh, it's uh, what is it? I don't. Uh, dang it! Is it a podcast? The Renaissance <laughs> podcast. The <laughs> old Renaissance podcast. Can we speak like old? Salutations, thou hath listened to the <laughs> West we Side. <laughs> Ex- extravaganza. The old, West- old West Side extravaganza. Yeah, I don't know. I, Thou I, I art even... but a foolish peasant, my dear. My dear? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. But uh, let's see. And I know there's also the performances. Uh, there's sen- Typically, there's seniors who read sonnets. Oh, I, I don't know if they're doing that this year because I haven't heard anything about that. But usually every year, there's a That's few like... seniors who are brave enough to read the sonnets that they write for, for their English class. Is that... I mean, that would work, because it's Shakespeare and sonnets. Wait, what? Wrote that lady a sonnet. (laughs) Ladies love sonnets. (laughs) And then, uh, I know they also have the Maypole. You know what that is? The Maypole, juniors are do the Maypole, and I'm pretty sure it's just Miss Sage's classes. Yeah. But, you know, it's just like weaving inside and out, right. a ribbon, and then just... You know what the Maypole <laughs> means? Mm, um, Fertility. No, that's what I thought. I was going to go with either chastity. Josh, Josh Baldwin is doing it this year, and I told him he had to prance around it, and he, he won't do it. So <laughs> but who, I mean, you should be skipping while doing it. Oh, yeah. That. If you don't, yeah, that's what you're supposed to, to do. prance yeah, merrily. Yeah, exactly, while well, they're wearing a tutu. No, but I mean, <laughs> and then there's also, uh, there's a little performance, there's Romeo and Juliet, there's the thing from 
the um, Scottish play. Yeah, bum, bum, bum. The three witches. Thesbians and... Yeah, Pyramus and Thisbe. Pyramus and Thisbe, that's the one. And uh, I remember doing that, because there's Pyramus, there's Thisbe, and then there's a person who plays the wall. And the lion. Yeah, the and wall. I Don't know the about lion. the wall, because... Two years ago, I was the wall. That's Can you give great. us a demonstration? Real quick? I was Christopher Walken. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's like that's the best thing uh, I've ever heard. I don't even remember the lines, but oh really? I get I got up and I did the wall lines and this sort of talking like this, and I had to talk real loud so that everyone in the theater could hear me, but. <laughs> Who's doing a really bad Christopher Walken impression? We have a lot of accents in this episode. And I made a lot of silly faces, and it made people laugh. <laughs> and I think I did a good job. I'm yeah, sure now I'm gonna go home and cry about how bad my Christopher Walken impression is. <laughs> it's not that bad. Okay. I like to think it's. Good. Oh, here we go. It's pretty good. Jake, I think Christopher Walken just walked into the room. Uh, <laughs> okay. Not yeah. Prompt does a show. That, do they really? They did I, last I year. Think, I don't think that they do. I know, they I know the co thing, choir does like a song in Latin. I know oh, that. That's, that's... I remember. I don't remember Harambe did Harambe. one last year, like a modern. Oh yeah, Romeo Harambe, and Yeah, they do a thing of Romeo and Juliet where there's oh. like, yeah, it's just kind of like that's a modern Romeo and Juliet oh, thing. It's like, oh, hey I'm... Juliet, how you doing? <laughs> hey girl, how hey, you girl. doing? Hey girl, hey girl. It's great. No, <laughs> I enjoy that. It's fun. It's all. It's all good fun. I didn't know that was gonna happen. And for those of us who work work on it, because I'm going to be working backstage for the performances, it's I mean it's a good way to get out of class. It is. It and is. for all the Eng and I mean most of the English classes go down sometime throughout the day. Yeah. So yeah. I mean everyone gets I mean, out of w at least one class I mean, to come to Shakespeare. I, I remember how in freshman year I made like weapons for oh yeah the, the little tin foil foil weapons. Yeah, I mean, and it was really and it was pretty good weapons. And I just remember learning a lot about the time period. So not only did yeah. I get out of class, I also learned something. It's about also it. it's a very wow. educational Isn't experience. There, there's a trivia. Yeah, there's trivia for the sophomores. Oh no, for anybody. Yeah. School is Johnson. cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm so bad at trivia. Oh, there is trivia. That's right. There's yeah, also yeah, the yeah. trivia team. Mr. Johnson. The one that... Trivia. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on there. But I think that's long enough for today, so it's time to wrap it up. There's some people outside who want to use the office. Or so just fangirl with Alan. Thank you very much for joining me, you two. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. I hope I you did, too. too. This like is a very so lively long. episode. Uh, until next time, thank you for joining us, everyone. This has been West Side Stories, episode four. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>